What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over blend poses. So blend poses are basically where you can take an animation or two animations and kind of mix them together. A few few states and uh, by different bones. So like in this case, I only have the running and the punching animations. But I can actually put this all into one and punch as I run. Now, it doesn't look perfectly... Um, perfectly made here and this is because these animations don't really go together to begin with they're both animations from Mixamo so they're using the same skeleton or at least skeletons that are very close so you can see some weird logic when I'm falling but still running in the air and those are things we can smooth out in a later episode I'm going to do like advanced blend pose logic but for now all I really want to cover is how we can get this blend pose logic to work and how we can do things like mixing up our attacks with it so you can see I have a punch here and it kind of just alternates. Right now I have it as random. You could do it every other time it switches. But yeah, that's also through blend poses. So blend poses can be used for a variety of things. This specifically where we're like running and punching is called um, like a layered bone blend pose. Whereas the blend pose where we're kind of changing what animation we do based on a certain value, such as an integer boolean or an enum value, then that's just like blend pose by int, by bool, by enum, any of that. So this will be a general video. I'm doing it in my action RPG tutorial series. I will leave a link right here in the top right corner if you want to catch up on that series. But if you're familiar and you watch my tutorials, you'll be seeing it in all of my series. I'll do it in the RPG series, I'll do it in the first person shooter. Now the Super Smash Brothers and the fighting game series aren't going to have nearly as much of it because a lot of the animations are going to be kind of just these static animations where they don't have to rely on your walk speed or anything like that. However, we could do it for a few different things, um, even if it's as simple as the movement. Uh, where they really shine are for mixing like state machines if you have to combine them or if you have to do certain different hit reactions, different win or loss animations, depending on who you won or lost to, different things like that. So that's the general overview. Now let's get into how we actually make this work. So to make a blend space work, we need to do a few things. Before, we were only using a state machine. And a state machine is good. But if we wanted to run and punch at the same time, we would then need a running and punching animation. So to avoid having to create all these extra animations, or for someone like myself, to avoid finding all these extra animations that actually work with a skeleton, we can kind of combine them together. So basically from idle to run, I have taken out the transition in my state machine. So if you've been following the series, this is what we had in the past. Basically, if the character speed was greater than zero, go into the running state. Well, now we can avoid that entirely. So there's no way to get to run right now. And there's a warning here telling me that, and that's okay. I was leaving that in to show you guys. But to get to punch, all we have to do is, uh, if the boolean has punched is true, we'll go there. And has punched is just bound to a key. So basically, once I press the one key on my keyboard, then uh, this boolean gets set to true, and then I go ahead and punch. This is the state machine. Remember all that stuff in the anim graph before the state machine? If you click on your anim graph here, there's a bunch, a bunch of other things going on. So for starters, we don't just have the state machine in here anymore. And we can, and honestly, we shouldn't do it just like this where we just have the this blend space always going with the state machine, there should be other rules in place. So let me read this to you and explain to you what it's, what it's doing, and then I'll cover why you should have a lot more advanced rules here if you're making this in the final product. But remember, this is a simple example to explain blend spaces, blend poses, all that good stuff. So we're taking our state machine. Normally your state machine would be plugged directly into your output pose. Well, we're doing a few different things here. First of all, we have a default blend space. I'll get into this in a minute. But just know, this is basically what's controlling the feet and making it move um, independently from the top half of the character. Then we have the base pose and the blend pose being brought into each other. 
So these poses are kind of being mixed together, as you saw. Like if I was in idle, then my legs were st still going. If I was moving, if I was falling or jumping, you could see that the top of my character was doing the jump animation, but the bottom was actually, his legs were still running. I have blend weights set to 1.0, and then I put that as the output pose. So yeah, this is pretty simple in terms of the actual logic because what it's doing is it's taking the base pose, which I'm putting in as the, basically the legs and how th that animation moves, and then the blend pose, which it's all the poses that come from the state machine. So whatever is currently selected in the state machine right now. And then I'm outputting that. Now, you can also put these blend poses right in the uh, states. So you don't even have to separate it from your state machine. Like if I had punch in here, um, sorry, not in here, in the actual animation. Then I'm actually using a blend pose in here for my random attack value, but you can also do the layered blend per bone. And you could mix several states, like I could do punching. And I could do my blend space in here as well. You can put these right in your states. Um, the reason I was putting it outside is just because I wanted to open up the uh, idea and the knowledge that you can put things outside here with the state machine and it can still be valid. In fact, it can be very useful. Now, this is a case where we shouldn't really be doing it out here. And I told you I'd tell you why. So the issue is for this specifically, I'm moving the feet. This is like the running blend space. Well, when we're jumping, we don't want to be doing that. So there's ways to cancel it. But really what we should do is just put this inside the state machine instead. Um, or at least have conditions to say, you know, make sure they're not in air before using this blend pose. We won't get into that right now because I'm going to be using these things a whole lot throughout these series. And you'll see how it ends up, you know, getting cleaned up and becoming a thing. Uh, as far as all the correct ways to do things go, they'll come in due time. But again, good enough for now. Now let's actually show you how we can get this blend space working and what a blend space even really is because I think that'll help make a lot more sense. So first of all, we have to make a blend space. I made mine in animations for my character, but you go add new animation and there's two types of blend spaces. So blend space is 2D, which means it has an X and a Y value. This is actually better for certain things like jumping. Um, if you're gonna do your blend space as a jump but for me, I just have uh, basically one condition, which is a blend space 1D. So one direction, one dimension, however you want to think of it. It actually stands for blend, st blend space one dimensional. In your 1D, you'll have one variable to put in. So in this case, we'll have to put in our speed variable. So speed. So remember how he's kind of crooked when you punch? Like you can see he's actually running and looking off a bit to the left. It's a little strange, right? Well, believe it or not, a blend space 2D could actually solve this here. So blend space 2D, you could have speed and direction, and then you could force the direction as what his, the rest of his um, animations are looking at. So instead of facing off to the left, you can force it to be the direction that he's moving. So blend spaces are super useful. If you've ever played a game and you've seen the character look around, like say with the mouse or uh, with the joystick, then when you're when you're moving it around, you see the character's body move and look at that. That's using a blend space. Well, not necessarily a blend space. Not everyone's using it in real, but it's using the same concepts behind a blend space, where it's essentially taking the top half of the mesh or the mesh at a certain bone and then moving it to the direction it's facing. So that's where 2D blend spaces come in. We're good with a 1D for now, for the basic example here. But you'll see plenty of 2Ds down the line. Alright, so for this horizontal axis, then we have our name field here. The name is what is going to pop up as a parameter to put into this. So let me show you how this works. In the um, anim graph, you saw that I was bringing in my character speed to this blend space. So once you create your blend space, you can add it right in your NMBP, as long as it's on the same skeleton, which we, it is. So I can add new blend space 1D. 
and you can see I have speed here now. Now if I change this to torque, which I mean, you know, we don't need torque, but you get my point, then it changes this. So that's what the name is doing. It's changing the value that you're putting into it. So just to make it a little bit different so you can keep track of which one's which without confusing anybody, I'm calling this one character speed. Okay, now the way a blend space works is it's telling you to pick a value. Let me expand this. The minimum value and the maximum value. And basically it's gonna go between those two values and determine you know, how much of the animation it should be playing. And essentially that's what it's doing. So you have zero is our minimum axis value. We have to drag in two animations, or we can actually drag in as many as we want. But let's drag in two to start with. So let's have our idle right here. And you can see that it's just always playing this. Okay, so like how does that help us? Well, right now it doesn't. But let's drag in our running. And now you can see when we get to running, then he's running. So it's actually blending between these. Now, it doesn't look great the majority of the time, so people usually have a few different states, like an idle to a walking to a jogging to a running to a sprinting or something like that. We only have idle to running, so there's only so much you can do. But you can see how he's running slower and his animation gets a little, you know, he's having a harder time blending. Now, if you've ever played Dead by Daylight, try walking really slow the next time you play it. You'll see that the character moves with like very little interaction with their feet. It kind of looks like this. And that's what's going on. It's directly bound to the speed you're going. So the animation is barely able to do anything and it kind of looks like you're just hobbling along. Now, that's all you really need to do for the blend space to set it up to work but we do need to modify some things to make it easier and more accurate. So we have this maximum axis value. Now, minimum is pretty much always gonna be zero because this is gonna be tied, at least for your character speed, it's gonna be tied to your movement. So in this case, the axis value is tied to our character speed, which essentially is going to be zero when we're not moving, which means you'll be in the idle state. Simple enough. And if I open up my other blend space, then you'll see that this is basically how it is on there too. But there's a difference in this one. I have maximum access value of 600. Now 600 is pretty much the default value you're gonna use in Unreal. And that's because the 600 value is the maximum character walk speed in the character BP. So remember, we've changed this before, but let me make this completely clear. Okay, so in your character BP, my base character BP, in my character movement, I can scroll down and look at max walk speed, which is 600. So max walk speed, in all reality, actually determines how fast the character can be walking across the ground. So if you modify this, and again, we have in the other series, and make this 1800, this character is going to zoom across the ground. See that? He is like flying. And so whatever that value is, is usually the common practice for setting the blend space maximum value if it's re directly related to their movement speed. However, it's not required. The reason you do this though, is once they reach their maximum speed, then they'll be going as fast as the final animation on this blend space. So it makes a lot of sense. However, if you wanted to, you could change your values here. So this is where the, the current end is. I could put it at 300, and then you can see, you know, this can be moved as needed. And now it doesn't take as much speed for me to go into full run. So you can see, even when I'm just barely pressing it, he's getting into full one full run. So that might be what you want. So a lot of that is up to you to decide. I'm going to keep my stuff at 600. Everything else I keep the same. Now, this has essentially become the same as default 1D. 
blend space, so I don't think I need the this one anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it to avoid any confusion. But that was an example just so you guys could see what the blend space was doing. All right, now it's cleaned up. Let's go back into the AnimBP. And let's take a second look at this now that we know what's going on here. So now I have my blend space and I have my character speed being brought into the speed parameter on the blend space. Well, that's good. So our blend space is technically working at this point, but the blend space on its own doesn't really do anything. I mean, you can play this as an animation. So for example, um, you could go into the state machine, hook up running, go into the run, and then play this. Um, we can compile this, then I'll have to go back here, disconnect this, and just connect the state machine. Now at this point, he can still run, and, and you know it works as an animation, so you can use it for different things. But I won't be able to punch or anything with it because of the reasons I've already told you. You know, I can't be in two states at the same time, and I don't have an animation for both of them. So, great, you know, we have a working animation, and that's good. But we still don't have any sort of way to play them at the same time. And that's where this layered bone comes in. So I've disconnected my run from the state once again. Let's go back into the anim graph, connect these to the layered blend per pose, per bone, and then uh, hook it up. Okay, so layered blend per bone basically is going to take a base pose and then what it calls blend pose zero and you can add more blend poses so you know you, you can add a bunch of these and blend a whole bunch of things together for now we'll just blend these two but I'm going to take the return of my state machine and put it as the blend poses and I'm going to have the base poses as my feet now this is a little tricky but the way you get this to work is you click on your layered blend per bone which again you can just type it in that's the name of it you can click on this and you have a bunch of settings. Now, I think a lot of this stuff is shut to begin with. So it probably looks something like this. You have config layer setup zero. So this is an array. And then this is the first index. And then you have branch filters. And then you have another array in this. And this is how we're going to determine where we want to uh, separate these two animations. So I've separated at the bone spine. If you go into your skeleton right here, then you have all these, you know, all your bones for your skeleton. Well, you can separate them at a specific point and then uh, get the, the blend to basically everything below this point will be the first blend, if I could get to it, will be the base pose and then everything above it will be the blend pose. So we can change it even right now. So let's say we want to do this at the the spine two instead of the spine. Now, if we did it at spine two, he's gonna run and look. It doesn't look so janky. He's not really looking off to the side. He is a little bit, okay, but only around his head. His arms are now pretty much in the right spot. They're a little bit over there, but you can tell that it's it's getting there. Now if you do the head, wait a second, the arms are in the right spot, everything's in the right spot, his head's a little not in the right spot, you know? But I can't punch, because the blended pose from the punch would actually be below the blended pose. So I can't punch. The blended pose from the state machine here is below the head. So only movement in the head will be shown. You see how that works? The head is up here, and so the arms on the punch are down here. Thus, they're actually part of the blend pose, or excuse me, the base pose here. The blend pose from the state machine is not being shown in that case. It is technically executing, it's just being blended out. So that's why you wanna put it kind of in the middle, where you can see everything you need for the head, everything you need for the arms, and even the chest, but everything below that can be for the running. So I like spine, but it can definitely change on your character.
And then I set the blend depth to one. I like to keep it one by default. That's what I was taught when I was learning it. And I basically just haven't messed with it much since. Usually for these blend spaces, you determine direction and that's how you get the head and everything facing the right way. So that's why I'm not really too worried about it right now that it doesn't look that way. We will be fixing that very shortly. Now the last thing we're gonna do today is show you how to do different attacks based on blend poses. So blend poses, I know we were just kind of going over blend spaces, but they're a little bit different. So blend poses basically, it, it is the same thing at the end of the day, where in terms of the logic it's actually doing, it's actually letting you blend two poses together. But really what we're gonna be using it for is to perform different attacks in the same state. And you can also do this in the anim graph. It doesn't have to be in a state, just so you're aware. But we have these nodes called blend poses by int. Okay. So blend poses by int and by bool. You can also blend them by enum. You can see here, there's all the enums. So like you can see, I can pick e quest reward here. Well, you know, I'm not gonna be able to plug in a quest reward uh, for my enum value here. That would be weird. But it's as simple as find blend poses and then type the enum name or find the enum name, and then you can drag the enum value into it. And once you've brought that in, you put in the pose that's related to that, and there you go. It's actually very simple to work with. And it's the same way that these blend poses by int works with. So, um, for this, essentially, you can have a bunch of different punching animations. You can keep blending these, by the way. You can literally do, like, another blend pose by int. And you could have another one, even. So it's like, uh, is it this pose, or is it one of these poses? And you can keep combining them. There's other tricks of doing different layers and things. But, basically for now, you have, I have my assassin punching and I have my reverse punch. So really it's just the punch, but I flipped it. Okay, so you can see where they flipped. And I'm putting, I'm putting one into blend pose zero and the other into blend pose one. They're still hooked up to attack speed and all. So you can see it doesn't really impede anything else I've already set up. Blend time I have 0.1 because um, it's not something that I need to like really blend out. It looks fine as is. And I just wanted to get there quickly. But it takes, if you're doing it by an integer, it takes an active child index. If you're doing it by enum, it takes in your enum instance. If you're doing it by Boolean, then it takes in true or false. Regardless of how you're doing it, they all work the exact same way. It's going to grab the value that you have here and it's going to output the um, blend pose at the given input. So if it's true or false, then if it's true, it's going to this one. If it's false, it's going to this one. As an integer, if it's zero or one, it's going to these. So let's try it out. Now, let's disconnect our random attack value. We'll go over that in a second. And let's say we make our active child index zero. Well, blend pose zero is going to be our regular punch. So now when I play the game, I should only ever get that punch. End of story. This is the only punch I should ever get. And that appears to be true. Okay, now if I switch this to one and do it, I should only ever get this punch. Great, that also appears to be true. So now if we wanna make it random, again, you can do alternating or whatever. You can do it based on the weapon you have or something like that. But I'm gonna have it random right now. So for random, all I do is in my um, state machine here, when I go to punch, I have the transition event, the start transition event. I call it determine punch animation. And then in my event graph, I grab that event by typing determine punch animation, grab the event form, and it'll look like this. Now, all I do is I set this random attack value to a random integer. So you can put in a max value. Um, if you give it zero, then it's going to just return zero. You need to give it how many values it can possibly be. 
so it's between zero and max minus one, it tells you right here. So zero to one, if it's max minus one, is two. Okay, so if you wanted zero to five, then you do max is six, because six minus one is five. It's that simple. So max, you always put one greater than what value you're looking to achieve. I'm looking to achieve zero and one, so I do max of two. And then I set the uh, return to an integer. You can either promote to variable here or set up an integer beforehand and just plug it in. And then every time this transition is run, it will create, well, it'll get a new random value and set it to this. And then this value is used to determine what punch we want to do. Okay, it's very simple, um, but it's very, very useful. You'll be seeing a lot more of these, so again, don't worry about the things that we haven't gone over yet. You'll be seeing them kind of naturally placed into these series. I won't have to really point them out as much anymore. Although, I will say that again, the fighting game in Super Smash Brothers are going to still be more just state machine related. We will include some blend poses, especially these types where we're determining different animations based off of it. But, yeah. So that's about all I got for you today on blend poses. This will help you dual wield your weapons and do attacks like that. It'll help you run while you're punching or shoot while you're punching like in the first person shooter tutorial series. As we get farther into the, the series, we'll do blend poses for direction. So we'll get them to actually look the way we're looking. That way they won't always be looking to the left when you're running like this. We'll be using a 2D blend space. You can have them look and face the camera. And, well, the camera follows you the whole time here, so, you know, that would be easy enough. But, I mean, we can have them look the way that the uh, you're forcing the camera to look and things like that. And we'll even use this for multiplayer for some of our uh, reloading animations and different things like that in the first-person shooter tutorial series. Because blend spaces are pretty good at being replicated, too. There are a few things you have to do that are different from regular animations, but you can use them just the same. And we can do things like manipulate just the hands so that they reload while we're still running or walking and all that good stuff. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If this video helped you, please subscribe. It does more for the channel and for me than anything else you can do. And I just really appreciate it. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for believing in me and continuing to support me and give me great ideas to make videos on. It's always I'm always so excited to figure out what you guys want to see next. Lastly guys, if you want to come check us out for some programming live streams or just for some gaming live streams, I have a Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash on the road 27. We do gaming streams on Monday and Wednesday and a programming stream on Friday. The programming streams also take place here on Fridays on YouTube. So right here on this channel. All right, guys. And that's all I've got for you today. So thank you so much for watching this episode. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.